Hi, this is Coco with Tarot Geek, and I'm filming part two of my mass market decks. And this, I'm going to start out with the Herbal Tarot. The Herbal Tarot is probably at least 20 years old. It is a very summery deck. And um, the plants are tied in with the meanings of the cards. The peony is thought to be a flower of intuition. And it's tied in with a high priestess, also thought to represent intuition. So all of the herbs and flowers will tie in with what the RWS meaning is for the card. Very bright yellows and greens and primary colors, but pretty, not jarring or anything. Like the Six of Swords with Ravain. And if you are not used to using plants in ritual practice or anything, this, this deck does teach you about the magical meanings of plants, not the medicinal meanings. Cayenne strength, cayenne, an herb of vitality, a plant of vitality and purification. Sturdiness, uh, cayenne stops bleeding, used with the strength card. Sage with the High Priest. It's actually a pretty good representation of plants tied in with the meaning here. For some reason, I never see this deck around. I don't know why. Maybe because it's traditional RWS. This... Actually, it is a good deck for somebody that is even a beginner to tarot that wants to learn about plants or used to tarot, but kind of beginner to plant energies. Or for somebody who's been around for a long time and just wants to combine things or just likes the plant energy. So that is an, the Herbal Tarot deck. Ooh, that was loud, sorry. Next one is the Wheel of the Year. Tarot, you may have seen this. This has been around for a while. This kind of has uh, fairy tale y vibes and costumey clothing on the people. Also, kind of a summary deck, although there are some. Depictions like the swords represent winter, but mostly it's a kind of bright, sunny deck. The wheel. Oh, there's nudity in my decks. So I forgot to say that. There's all, almost all my decks for some reason have have some nudity. So I do want to warn people there. Cool death card. I like this Five of Pentacles. And the um, Hangman is winter. He's frozen. The Three of Swords I like because it's showing the birds of air. And rather than stabbing something through a heart, the, the swords are in the land, and it represents the air. So I do like that card quite a bit. Uh, some fey energy in this. Judgment, pretty beautiful card there. Bright, this one's kind of modern. These cards, both these cards are pretty modern looking, uh, really pretty summery colors. More fey energy. A very pretty card. Another winter card, Four of Swords. Hermit's kind of wintery. Oh, beautiful star card. 
mostly pretty traditional. And it, it is meant to depict the seasons, but I, I always think of it more as a summery deck. Flames. <laughs> that is not a summary card. The Queen of Swords looks pretty harsh in this deck. <laughs> and the tower. Brutal there. Then you have the cups, which are very summary. That is the Wheel of the Year. And I think somehow I've managed to lose my guidebook on this one. I probably used to have a guidebook. Who knows where that is at this point. I'll probably never find that. Okay. This is the traditional manga tarot. And I did show you a manga tarot last time. I should get this manga tarot, and which is really cool. Um, and I probably use this one the most. There are several manga tarots in print that are mass market. I think this deck is very pretty too. I don't use it quite as much. I do really like it. It is traditional RWS. World gorgeous. This is a very soft style of art. And very fun. Really enjoy having this deck. If you like this artwork, it's pretty easy to read. It does have a guidebook too. Just a little white book. Ace of Swords, Queen of Wands. Judgment, pretty judgment. The Fool, Queen of Cups, Seven of Cups, Beautiful High Priestess, Cool King of Swords, Justice, very beautiful Justice. So I do enjoy this deck. There's another Manga Tarot deck out, which I don't have. It has really big borders. I just never ended up getting it. But I do really like this one. Beautiful Temperance. The Devil is pretty cool in this one. <laughs> the Star, gorgeous. The Majors are especially beautiful. The Court Cards are really pretty. It's just a nice deck. Three of Swords, very traditional. Four of Swords. Six of Cups, very traditional. Hermit, very traditional. Anyway, Empress. Very pretty deck. Very fun to use. Okay, next I'm going to show... The Tarot of 78 Doors. This, you would think, oh, this is probably a portal deck. But it is more a portal into your heart style deck. Pretty traditional again, most of the time, but not completely. So people falling off the cliff and then some going towards the light in Judgment. Uh, this sort, Three of Swords is different because... It's an old lady poking a doll using some type of magic. And instead of heartbreak or uh, one's suffering from choices they've made, it's somebody trying to harm someone else. So that's a little, there's, there's some cards in here that are a little different. Some of it is a little modern, like this card's pretty modern. It's not as consistent as some of the other cards. King of Chalices is a merman. Knight of Pentacles, pretty traditional. Towers on the Edge of Ocean on Fire, beautiful star card. Again, I have nudity in my decks. 
This one's mo very modern. Some of them are modern and then some of them are not. It's interesting. This is not modern. This is really modern. Modern. So it's, it's just mixed. It is, um, it's easy to use, but some of the meanings are a little different. And the fact that it's not totally consistent with the theme makes it a little odd. But it's different. I don't see it much. Thought I'd show it. Ace of Swords is a maze. Kind of cool. Some kind of cool interpretations in here. The little white book doesn't say a word about the deck going its own way. It just gives you the traditional meaning. So it's actually not very helpful uh, figuring things out with this. So these are two decks that have pretty much the same art or same style artwork. I prefer the Tarot of the Dream Enchant Enchantress over the Secret Tarot. I originally saw the Secret Tarot in a book. Uh, I think I saw one card and I got it. The um, characters in this deck are ghost-like. Um, and some of them are like white or blue. Like the Empress looks like she's definitely a ghost and she's blue. Sun, they're not quite, they don't quite look like that. Um, to a sword, she looks like an alien almost. So there, or Fay or something. Some different characters in this. A lot of them look ghostly. The Queen of Pentacles looks like a ghost. And the Queen of Swords is no doubt definitely a ghost. Uh, she's blue and kind of haunting looking. So I do like the deck. It is very different. Uh, it's it's a fairly severe that this is the car that uh, card that I saw the star in a deck or in a book one time, and I just thought, oh, that's such a pretty card. I'm gonna get the deck. And then the deck was a little different than I thought. I I mean, I'm still keeping it, and I still would want to keep it, but. Kind of funny, she left in her skirt there. Uh, Ace of Swords here, Four of Swords. But it isn't what I thought it was going to be. But, you know, sometimes things are like that, and you just go with it. It was mass market, so it wasn't expensive. And that is the Secret Tarot. And... Marco Nizzoli is the artist on this, and I think on this one, too, same artist, um, was it same? It, Marco Nizzoli. This one I like more. This is a dream deck. It's called Tarot the Dream Enchantress. I really enjoy this deck. This deck has um, just symbols and numbers. So like three of pinnacles, three of cups. This is very fey. So it's got just fey energy. Three of swords. High priestess. Eight of swords. Ace of swords. Ace of pinnacles. I love the knight of cats. Or the knight of... <laughs> Knight of Wands on, on the cat that's green and huge. Empress. Ace of Swords. Very fey energy there. Fourteen Temperance. Also very fey. Uh, five of Wands. It's a little bit of a different depiction. The kings and the hierophant, and I think the emperor, all have mass, and so you don't see their faces. Um, the kings are mostly dressed in 
feminine style clothing. I think this is the King of Swords. The Moon. Fae energy again. The Emperor. Mask. Feminine clothing. Ten of Cups. Um, this, and I love this wheel. Wheel of Fortune card. Um, this is, this deck has pretty cool energy and is really fun to use and really great to work with. I really enjoy this deck. I worked with this a little bit in January again. I hadn't used it in a while. And uh, Queen of Pentacles, the queens in this are really unique, like bright red for the Queen of Pentacles. Justice, Five of Swords, Two of Wands, Six of Cups. I think that's a pretty cool card. Um, anyway, if I was going to choose between this and the Secret Tarot, I would definitely choose this one. But I have heard people complain they don't like the mass on the kings. I actually like it. It's something different. It helps you see something differently. I love the backs on this deck. Just beautiful. The backs on this tarot are very pretty. I think this is a very pretty deck. Not something I hear about very often. It is the Tarot of the Dream Enchantress. Well worth getting, in my opinion. I'm going to show you the Chrysalis Tarot. This deck has beautiful artwork. It, however, uh, paintings by Holly Sierra, written by Tony Brooks. Um, it does take some time to get to know this deck. Um, it does change the suits, and it uh, the court cards have archetypes on them. The muse is the queen of spirals. Nine of scrolls. So, so scrolls are swords. Spirals are wands. And they pretty closely correspond. Like spirals will mostly be fire. Scrolls will mostly be air. Mirrors will mostly be water and cups. Stones are pretty solidly earth and pinnacles. But it's not totally traditional and it doesn't follow the RWS. It doesn't really follow the Thoth. It kind of does its own thing. It's not probably a deck I would recommend for beginners. The golden flower is temperance. Psyche is the world. But the art in this deck is just quite stunning. Ten of mirrors. Gaia is the empress. Perfect. Beautiful card. Uh, Queen of mirrors. The Watcher. So there's the archetypes. Three of Spirals. Six of Spirals. And when, you know, the guidebook, this little white guidebook's pretty good. There's also a big book. I don't know if the big book is now out of print. But that that little guidebook tells you quite a bit. But it it's the meanings are not the same as an RWS meaning. I'll read you the nine of spirals. Six, seven. The ancient wind blown Aliolus, captain of the four winds, sends gently spiraling winds in your direction when the nine of spirals unfurls. The circling ravens symbolize the cardinal winds, north, south, east, and west, which represent energies of change. Wind is the great cosmic organizer. The nine of spirals is about holding fast to your course and shaping creative solutions when ill winds blow. Like all tarot cards numbered nine, the card signals completion of an effort and success. So it is, I'll show you a few more cards. Um, it does have a pretty good guidebook that comes with it, but it is a little different than the traditional means. I love that Matt is justice. And it's, 
Justice is eight, not 11. Companion is King of Spirals. Celtic Owl is the Hanging Man. Four of Scrolls. Knight of Stones is the Illusionist. Ten of Scrolls and has a tiger, which I think is totally beautiful. Four of Stones. The stones are the most traditional sign in the deck. Some of the other elements and suits go their own way. A little more Phoenix's judgment. And when you see a Phoenix for death or judgment, it's always probably something that's fairly harsh. It's not a easy transition there. And But if you want to put time into a deck, I do think this is a nice deck to use. Bella Rosa is the devil. Lovers are the lovers. Three of Mirrors, that's a sweet card. Elfa is the star. But the art is what drew me to this. I think the art is gorgeous. Merlin is the hero the fool, instead of the fool. The moon is the moon, though. Beautiful moon card. Three of stones, and it shows the owls. I always like when owls are depicted in, in tarot, but this is a little bit different than, because you would expect owls to be part of a sword suit, and here they're part of a pinnacle suit. The swans, okay, that that way you would expect swans there. It's the squirrels with a raven. So a deck worth investing time in if you have the time and want to learn something. But probably not the best deck for a beginner. Or I would I would, probably would not want to start with that deck. If it was me. <laughs> I would not advise it. And I'm going to show you the Finestra Tarot. I've maybe seen this around, but um, I thought everybody knew about it. And then this year at Tarot Symposium, there were people there carrying it around. It said they just learned about it. And um, there's always a table there where you can do exchanges and you just bring decks and you can pick up a deck. And you can bring 10 decks and pick up 10 decks. Like bring 10, ten decks you're tired of and then pick up 10 new decks. And so somebody picked it. I think a couple people were picking this up and told me they had never seen it before. And it, this is a pretty pretty much a typical RWS. It reminds me of art from the 80s, even though it's not. It's probably I think, sometime in 2010 to 20, I think. Probably mid, probably 2015 or so that this deck came. I think it could have came out earlier than that, and I just didn't realize it. That is the Finestra Tarot by Ch Chatria. Or, you know, I'm probably saying that wrong. I probably shouldn't even try. Sometimes I don't. I shouldn't try saying the names if I don't know about them. So here's a deck that I picked up at. I picked up at Tarot Symposium that I didn't know about, and. This is a really fun tarot. It is called the Magic Tarot by Amaya Arizola. Super fun deck. And I, I brought a bunch of decks. And then there were a few that I picked up. I actually went home, I think, with less decks from the trade table than I brought, which was good because that was my goal. Um, I did end up getting decks though when I walked around from the vendors. This is just a unusual kind of fun deck. Quirky. And I really hadn't seen it before. 
love that card. And it is a Fournier deck. So they're a little smaller. I don't know how old this deck is. It's new to me, and I think it's a fun deck to use. And I like its little quirky style. And it follows the R to a BUS. It would be fine for a beginner. In my opinion. Okay, let's show you the John Bauer Tarot. It's been around a while. You've probably seen this. I enjoy this deck and I love John Bauer's illustrations of Swedish folk tales. And this deck um, corresponds to the stories. So um, I do think it might be, if you want to use this deck, it might be good to pick up a book that he, uh, like a Swedish folktale book that he illustrated so you can learn about the story. There's a lot of troll stories in this and princess and the princess power over animals. And um, it really helps with this deck to have one of those Swedish folktale books that he illustrated so you know the stories and it does cry and follow the RWS but it definitely goes its own way and the stories have a lot of meaning in this deck I often see this deck where people cut off the top and bottom and use it as an oracle card but I like using this as a tarot it does have um, backs that are the princess but they don't necessarily go with the deck, I don't think. But anyway, uh, I end up using this deck a lot. More than a lot of my decks. I, I really love his art. And I enjoy like reading the story when I draw some of the cards. And then going back and reading the story and the fairy tale that surrounds my cards and just adds a layer of meaning. Really fun. And I enjoy the Swedish folk tales. And this, I don't know if you know about Candlemas and <coughs> young ladies wear um, a, a wreath or crown with lit candles around it. When my kids were in Wilder School, they always used to, somebody would always be picked for that every year. It was very beautiful. It seems a little dangerous, but it was very cool. Anyway, that is the John Bauer Tarot. And we went through almost the whole deck. And if you don't have this deck, I think it's a pretty great deck. Mass market, easy to get anytime. This is the Art Nouveau Tarot. The Art Nouveau style always reminds me of being in Prague, which I think is such an incredibly beautiful city. Oh, such a pretty moon court. I, I enjoy it. Art Nouveau style. I always like decks that have the Art Nouveau style. Don't like this card. But uh, mostly just absolutely stunning and beautiful. And a very traditional RWS deck. And it has all the languages around it, but it doesn't bother me because the cards are so busy you don't really notice. I probably won't trim this. I mean, they haven't, so probably not going to happen. But if you like this style, this is a great deck. I love that. Anyway, very pretty. Very fun. Tarot Art Nouveau, and that is by Antonella Castelli. 
And the last one I have is the Happy Tarot. And you might have seen this, but this is a deck that actually makes me happy when I use it. And sometimes when I know I'm going to have some harsh news from my cards, I'll use this deck. Because it's somehow, even though it still tells me the news, it doesn't feel quite as painful with this deck. I love the colors in this deck, especially the purple. The pur I love purple and green together. I think that's so pretty. It's just such a sweet deck. And if you don't like this kind of art, then you're probably like, oh, no thanks. But I enjoy having some cute decks. And I'll end up using this sometimes when I just feel like, ugh, I know I'm going to have to hear something harsh. Maybe I'll use my Happy Tarot because at least the news doesn't feel quite as painful. I think uh, Lisa Pep has shown this on her channel before. I don't even know if she still has it. I think she might have rehomed it. But I'm not going to rehome it. I love it. I think it's super cool. And there's times where I just want the stack. So I, I love the colors too. They're just bright and fun. Very summery. Very sweet. And that is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.